Anti-Infectives Drugs Lecture. There are several different types of microorganisms that cause disease within the body. There are bacteria, viruses, protozoa, fungus, rickettsia, and helmets. Some definitions you will want to be familiar with in this unit. Normal flora, which is bacteria inside and outside of our body that does not cause disease. Pathogenic is considered a bacteria or microorganism that causes disease. Our best defense mechanism within our body is our skin. Antigens are foreign invaders. Antibodies are what the body produces when unfamiliar organisms enter the body. Antibiotics are a class of medications that we use to treat bacterial infections. Antivirals are a class of medications that we use to treat viral infections. Antimicrobials, the antibiotics and antivirals, fall under this classification. This can be anything from medications to disinfectants and so on. Super infections are secondary infections that occur while antibiotics are destroying the first infection. Most common examples of this are C. diff and yeast infections. Bacteria are characterized by their shape. They can be either normal flora or pathogenic. We use the following to fight infections. We have antiseptics that prevent and inhibit microbes, especially bacteria. We have bactericidals which kill and destroy bacteria. We have disinfectants which are chemical agents that kill vegetative forms of bacteria. Typically we use this on our exam tables and our counters. Bactericidals are more used on our hands and on our body. And then we also have antibiotics, which is a class of medications that patients can take to kill the bacterial infection. Anti-infective medications. There are several different factors that play in part to which medication we prescribe for an infection. So the selection of drug is dependent on the type of microorganism. Is it gram positive? Is it gram po negative? Is it a bacteria or is it a virus or is it a fungus? The site, is it a UTI? Is it a respiratory infection? Those two would be completely different medications prescribed, which we will discuss later in this lecture. The status of hepatic and renal function, some of the anti-infective medications can be very harsh on our liver and kidneys. If patients have renal disease or liver disease already, there are certain classes of medications we will not prescri prescribe to further damage those organs. Pregnancy, some medications can harm the fetus, so we will not prescribe those. The likelihood of the organism developing resistance, we will talk a little bit about MRSA and VRE in a couple of slides. And known allergies to medications. So if a patient has an allergy to penicillins, we are not going to prescribe penicillin, obviously, but other medications in that class, such as amoxicillin, anything that is related. If a patient has allergies to penicillins, we will also not prescribe cephalosporin type medications because they are very closely related. Another example of this is there are many patients out there that have sulfa drug allergies and we want to be careful and we would not want to prescribe sulfa methoxazole to those patients for, for those allergy reasons. Antibiotic resistance, one of the world's most significant public health problems. Resistance occurs when antibiotics is used inappropriately to treat infections. We prescribe antibiotic therapy only when it benefits the patient. We treat the patient with antibiotics that is specific to the infecting pathogen. We prescribe the recommended dose and treatment duration of the medication. It's very important to encourage our patients to take their antibiotic therapy for the full length of time. They cannot stop the medication once they are feeling better. That doesn't mean that the bacteria 
is totally out of the system and totally damaged. They may be feeling a little better because it, the antibiotic is at work, but the infection is not completely gone. This is when we see patients with recurrent infections is when they don't complete their medications. And this is how bacteria gain resistance. Classification of antibiotics. So we have broad spectrum, which is effective against many different types of microorganisms. An example is amoxyl. Narrow spectrum, effective against limited types of microorganisms. Penicillin has started to fall under this category due to its increased resistance. Extended spectrum, antimicrobial activity is extended to include Pseudomonas, Enterobacter, and Proteus species. Examples would be Cipro and Augmentin. I don't expect you to know which medications fall under these different classifications. However, I want you to be aware that there are three different classifications. Aminoglycosides are antibiotics. They interfere with the synthesis of bacterial cell protein and they promote death of the bacteria. Usually this is effective against gram-negative bacteria. The most common medications are gentamicin, neomycin, and tobramycin. They are a lot stronger than other antibiotics. Generally we give these types of antibiotics when other classes of medications have not worked. These types of medications can also come in ear and eye drops. This medication is usually given intramuscular IV in the clinic or in the hospital due to poor absorption in the GI tract. We have to do serum blood levels to, do, to test for optimal dosing. And this medication class is contraindicated in pregnant people and people on diuretics, mainly because diuretics cause the kidneys to work hard and so do the amino glycosides, so we don't want to put that patient in renal failure. Diseases that this type of medication is very effective against is TB, the plague, bacterial endocarditis, Hib, pneumonia, and resp severe respiratory tract infections. So as you can tell, these are our diseases that are resistant, they're pretty severe, we would use an antibiotic that's pretty strong for those diseases, such as an aminoglycoside. Cephalosporins, broad spectrum antibiotics, they are used to treat gram-positive bacteria, they inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis. Common medications, this is a very common medication class that is pretty widely prescribed. The most common you will see out there is cephalexin or keflex, which is generally used for skin infections and UTIs. However, can be used for other things. Cefuroxine or ceftin, very beneficial against bacterial pneumonia. Ceftriaxone or rocephin is very beneficial against STDs and gonorrhea. Some other diseases that cephalosporins are very beneficial against are mild to severe respiratory tract infections, otitis media, skin infections, septicemia, GI infections, meningitis, and joint infections. Um, very effective against respiratory tract infections, especially those respiratory tract infections that are resistant to penicillin. Cephalosporins are related to the penicillin family, so should not be prescribed if there are allergies. Contraindicated in renal impairment or history of colitis. And then avoid alcohol consumption. If you take cephalosporins and you consume alcohol, patients can have symptoms of flushing, chest pain, palpitations, and tachycardia. Macrolids are broad spectrum antibiotics. They act by binding to the bacterial's romosomal subunits inhibiting protein synthesis. Common drugs are erythromycin and azithromycin, also a Z-pack. Over to the right here is an example of a Z-pack. Usually the first dose is heavier, so in this case there's two pills, and then it tells the patient then thereafter the pill that they should take. 
and they are labeled here as you can see. They are used to treat otitis media, respiratory infections, acne, and some STDs when patients are allergic to penicillin drugs. Contraindications are liver disease, and azithromycin should not be prescribed to children under the age of 16, mainly due to its actions in fighting the uh, bacteria. Penicillin is a broad-spectrum antibiotic, treats gram-negative and gram-positive cocci and bacilli. The action interferes with bacterial cell wall growth among newly formed cells. Bacteria then die by rapid fluid inflow due to lack of rigid cell wall. So common medications that you will see are penicillin VK. VK means with potassium. Amoxicillin and ampicillin are all common drugs. We used to treat sinus infections, bronchitis, intestinal, infections, syphilis, otitis media. We also use this for dental prophylaxis to prevent endocarditis after dental procedures. So the common dosage for dental prophylaxis is one gram one hour prior to, usually of penicillin. Combination drugs often used in this class to help with resistance. And the most common combination drug is Augmentin, which is amoxicillin clavulanate. I should also mention that dental prophylaxis is used for anybody who has heart valve surgeries, hip replacement, and knee replacements. However, some physicians are not doing dental prophylaxis due to antibiotic resistance as much. However, anybody with a heart valve definitely would need dental prophylaxis. Some physicians are choosing not to do the dental prophylaxis for hip and knee replacements anymore. Um, there are certain studies out there that show that the benefit um, does not outweigh the risks. Quinolones are broad spectrum antibiotics for gram negative and positive bacteria. Action, they alter the DNA and prevent duplication and repair of the bacterial DNA. Some common drugs are Cipro and Levaquin. Used to treat UTIs, sinuses, lower respiratory tract, GI tract, skin, bone and joint, and gonorrhea infections. It is encouraged that patients drink a lot of fluids. And some people might ask why would we want to take a medication that alters the DNA? Well, this specific medication only alters the DNA of the the DNA enzyme of the bacteria. Bacteria contain a DNA called the grinase which is only present in bacteria and not present in humans. So it doesn't really affect the human DNA, it just affects the bacterial and kills the bacteria. Tetracycline is a broad spectrum gram negative and positive antibiotic. It prevents bacteria from making protein to interpret the reproduction of bacteria. Treatment for rickettsia, chlamydia, and acne. Doxycycline is oftentimes used for treatment of acne. Um, patients should limit their exposure to sunlight. And this medication also causes teeth staining, especially in children and also in, in adults, but more in children. Contraindicated in patients with liver and renal dysfunction children and pregnant women and should be given on an empty stomach and should not be taken with dairy products. Nitrofurantoin or macrobid is a broad spectrum antibiotic for gram negative and positive bacteria. It specifically targets E. coli bacteria, which typically is the bacteria that gives us UTIs or urinary tract infections. It is the first line treatment for urinary tract infections and bladder infections. 
It will change the color of urine sometimes to an orangish, um, greenish color sometimes. Patients should be instructed to drink lots of water while taking this medication. And it is contraindicated in people with kidney and liver disease. Sulfonamides. The main medication in this class is sulf sulfamethoxazole with trimethoprim, also called Bactrim. Used to treat UTIs and bladder infections. Also used to treat otitis media. Many patients are allergic to sulfa drugs, so we need to be aware of this prior to prescribing. The reason why this medication works for UTIs and bladder infections so well is that sulfa tends to collect in the bladder prior to being excreted, so it takes care of the infection. Anti-tuberculosis drugs. TB is treated with a mix of two to four drugs daily. Two purposes of treatment, there is latent TB and then there is also active TB to prevent relapse and to prevent relapse, I should say. Treatment is isonide or INH or rifampin. Rifampin turns um, secretions reddish orange and birth control is ineffective while taking. Metronidazole or flagell is an antibiotic and antiprotozoal. It stops the growth of infection by inhibiting the DNA replication. This is used for bacteria and protozoa. Its treatments for trichomoniasis, gardeus, C. diff, antibiotic associated diarrhea, rosacea, and H. pylori infections. It is contraindicated in people who have liver disease, seizures, and pregnancy. Vancomycin is the treatment for MRSA. MRSA is methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aneurys. It is typically given IV. It can develop VRE, vancomycin resistant enterococci. VRE is then treated with linizide, xylid, or Zyvox. We also have fungus infections. The organisms include molds and yeast. They may be parasitic. Some common diseases are histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, Canada infections, athlete's foot, tinea are all common diseases. Histoplasmosis and blastomycosis are both respiratory infections. Antifungals inhibit the growth of fungi and yeast. They bind to certain sterile cell membranes, thus causing leakage of intracellular components. They are not effective against viruses, bacteria, or rickettsia. They are contraindicated in renal disease and bone marrow depression. Patients should wear gloves when applying topical creams and ointments. Some examples of antifungals are fluconazole or diflucan, which treat vaginal yeast infections. Nystatin treats thrush. Ketoconazole treats fungal skin infections. Myconazole, nitrate, or monostat can treat athlete's foot, vaginal yeast infections, and ringworm. Turbinifying or Lamisil is very effective against toe fungus and am Amphrotericin B is effective in respiratory infect fungal infections and generally is given IV. Viruses, it depends on the host cell to reproduce. The diseases caused by viruses, uh, most childhood diseases such as polio and many of our vaccinations that covered um, those childhood diseases, herpes, influenza, hepatitis, HIV and AIDS, Ebola, RSV, and the common cold. Antivirals, they in vitro inhibit activity against the herpes virus. 
They, they are not a cure, but they help reduce the flare-ups. Common drugs are acyclovir and valacyclovir. You can tell antivirals by the ending vir for herpes. So these treat herpes simplex, herpes simplex 1 and 2. Herpes zoster, which is best treated 24 hours to 72 hours, within 72 to 24 hours. This is your shingles. And then the varicella zoster, which is um, prevented usually by our Zostavax. Contraindicated in anybody who is pregnant. Other antivirals, Tamiflu and Relenza are used for influenza A and B. Must be taken within 48 hours of onset, otherwise it is minimally effective. This medication is taken to shorten the period of time that the flu-like symptoms are present. So if you don't take it within 24 hours, generally the flu only lasts seven days. If you don't take it within 48 hours, the, on, the, the period in which you have influenza is not really shortened. And really the medication is not very effective. Relenza is for people ages 12 and over. Both are not a substitution for the flu shot, um, mainly because Tamiflu and Relenza are both very expensive for the sh short term prescription is very expensive to take. Many patients often opt to suffer through the symptoms. Ribavirin is used to treat RSV and then um, Hepatitis C, we also have Harvani now to help treat hepatitis C. Most viruses do not have a drug to eliminate the illness. Um, good examples are Ebola, um, HIV and AIDS. Really, we just have medications that help with HIV and AIDS, um, slow down the progression. Same thing with hepatitis C. The medications we have just slow the progression. They don't really treat or get rid of the illness.